In this video, we will get our first look at Eclipse, and we will set up the project that we will be creating throughout the rest of the course. So wherever you put the Eclipse shortcut, go ahead and click on it to open it. Now in Windows, you'll get this warning about opening the file. I'm going to uncheck this so I don't get this dialog every time I run Eclipse. When Eclipse opens, it's going to prompt you for the location of what's called the workspace. This is where Eclipse is going to store all of the files that you create. Now you can put this anywhere you like. Every platform is going to have some kind of user's home directory, and that is where I'm going to define my workspace. C colon users mic documents, which is the my documents folder, and then I'm going to create a workspace directory called Java. So you can browse to a different location if you like, or you can type in your particular workspace location. Now you probably don't want Eclipse to ask you this question every time you open it. So you can check this box here, which will now use this as the default workspace location. Then click OK and Eclipse will open. The first time that you open Eclipse, you will see what's called the welcome screen. And this just has some handy links to some documentation, an overview, some samples, a couple of tutorials, and so forth. Eclipse uses a tabbed user interface, so you can close this welcome screen simply by closing the tab. This will bring you to what's called the workbench. Now, if you want to see the welcome screen again, you just go up to the help menu and you say welcome. Let's set up our project. Our application will be contained inside of what's called a Java project. So to create that, we just go to the file menu, we select new, and we say we want a new Java project. There are a couple of settings that we need to give it, not the least of which is the name of the project. And since we're creating an airline reservation system, I'm going to call the project reservations. It will ask you where you want to put the files that you're going to create. And as you can see, it defaults to the workspace directory that we set up earlier. Now, this next section is an important one. This tells Eclipse which Java runtime environment you want to use to execute the files that you create. The default is what's called Foundation 1.1, which is a standardized configuration for running Java files. There are a number of these to choose from. Each one will configure your Java application to run under a different version of Java. What this will do is when you're finished building your Java application and you bundle it all together to run, if you use one of these pre-configured setups, your application package will be smaller in size. Now for this course, we're focusing on Java 8, which is brand new. And so Eclipse hasn't actually caught up to a Java 8 configuration yet. So we need to be specific about that. Now we installed Java 8 and made it the default runtime environment when we're using our command prompt. And Eclipse knows about that. So instead of selecting a built-in configuration, let's just tell it to use the default Java runtime environment. And it tells us that that is set to Java runtime environment version 8. That way it will compile and run using Java 8. Well, that's all we need to set up right now. So let's click finish. And now we have our project. It's represented here as a folder. And this package explorer will give us access to all of the files that we create for our application. Let's see what's inside of it currently. Right now, our reservations package contains all of the libraries for Java 8, and it contains what's called a source folder. This is just a location where you are going to store the files that you write in Java. Now, as we create different types of Java files, we want to organize them into what are called packages. Packages are used when you bundle the final version of your application together, and it allows you to include certain packages in your bundle and exclude others. For example, we will be writing tests for a lot of the files that we create. We don't need to bundle those into the final version of our application. So we'll put them in a separate source folder. The next thing that we'll do before we write our first Java file is to create a package. That's done by right-clicking on the folder, saying New, and then choosing Package. 
you'll notice that it's going to put our package inside of the SRC folder. So the name that you give your package is pretty important. It's used to uniquely identify the files that are going to be inside this package in the event that you end up sharing them with others. And in the Java community, that's fairly common. So if I create a file called customer and you create a file called customer, we have to be able to share those in a way that they don't conflict. And that's done by putting them in a unique package. Now the Java committee and Oracle recommends a naming standard for your packages, which is your domain name on the internet in reverse. Now, if you're never going to share your application, this isn't as important, but let's assume that you are. So if my website is www.airline.org, the naming convention I should use for my package so that it doesn't conflict with anyone else would be org.airline. Then follow that typically with the name of your application, which for us is reservations. So that is going to be our package name. Let's click finish and it'll create it for us. And there it is right there. So all of the Java files that are going to execute as part of our application will go inside of this package. Now in much larger enterprise applications where you may have hundreds of different Java files, you may break these packages down even further. So for example, the Java files that represent the data portion of your application may have their own package. And then the files that represent the user interface would be in their own package. But since we're not building that large of an application, we are just going to put everything into one package. So our project is all set up, and now we're ready to create our first Java file.